How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. Time to get into some animation. Time to get your imagination all cranked up. Get into some creativity. And it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from... I'm gonna mispronounce this name. I know. It's like the first time I've ever mispronounced something before. Uh, Broer Anders Wickstrom. I love his work. I think he is really, really phenomenal. Uh, he was a uh, float and costume illustrator for Mardi Gras parades. But look how great these uh, these images are. I mean, I love the, the line work, the the style. I, I really like his sense of, it's really interesting because I'm looking at this stuff from, from more of an illustration or animation point of view um, rather than looking at it as a float, but looking at it as an individual piece of art in and of itself and the way that he encapsulates it's all into a single unit and has everything kind of play together and work together. It's just lovely, uh, small composition. And, and I really, really think his stuff is gorgeous. I mean, each and every one of these and the way that the characters play and the flow throughout the whole piece, it's really just interesting. And uh, it's something that I, I, I guess up until a few days ago, I hadn't really considered looking at concept art for people who do floats and parades and stuff but it's just so gorgeous and wonderful i'd love to see what uh, people are doing these days I, I i mean it's probably more golden age uh, style i think his this stuff was around 1910 or so when he was doing this but i mean look at these creatures that he comes up with just gorgeous gorgeous stuff uh, i think i grabbed some stuff too that was uh, i love this piece i think the color in here is just just beautiful i love the way everything works the greens and the browns a little bit of oranges and it just blends so well and i really like the, the landscape here and the whole the whole thing as a unit just plays so well together i really love the flow of this piece um but where were those i thought there were a couple of little characters that he did which were like costumes that would have been uh going along look at this look at this. that's so crazy it's so cute i love it uh, wonderful stuff so I urge you guys to check out more stuff from him and unfortunately there isn't hardly anything available for written word from him so this is from a book um, that was uh, on uh, the culture of the southern culture of, about parades and uh, the Mardi Gras kind of culture and uh, it said that a quote uh, that was attributed to him again uh, you know I try to be as, as researched as I can be with, with trying to find a quote and trying to find it from the original um, creator. And he said, uh, pro bono publico, or for the public good, was a, was a motto that was used, uh, if not by him, then by the culture um, that he was definitely a part of. Um, and I think that's a, a really great um, motto to have, um, that you're, you're doing stuff that, that's helping people. And... Uh, to benefit your, yourself and others around you that it's not just all um, that you're thinking about community and community building I mean if you look at like the nine old men from Disney's um, animation studio uh, who there's there some great animators before and after as well but the thing that I think I, I really liked about that culture is they realized that they were starting to get older and so they started writing these books and writing down their knowledge and writing down, and this is I mean, these guys could have just retired or just could have um, kept on just making their films and not really shared the knowledge um, that they had with other people but I think it's important and they recognize that it's important to 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 share what you've learned and it doesn't mean that you have to be a master of your craft at all but let's say you've been playing the oboe for six months um, you're obviously unless you're just a virtuoso that, that came out of nowhere you're probably not that skilled in playing the oboe after just three or six months or whatever but you probably know tons more than a guy who just bought his oboe yesterday so there's plenty that you can share and then the people who are have been doing the oboe for five years can definitely help the guy who's been doing it for six months or the girl who's been doing it for 12 years can help the guy you see there's there's a point at which um in order to kind of grow yourself uh, i think you have to share and contrary to the the statement that say that, that says that those that can do and those that can't teach or you've heard i'm sure you've heard that that meme i don't i don't really think that's true uh, albeit i think if you spend more time teaching than you do creating um, yourself you can kind of stagnate or, or hit like a plateau level i think there's probably some truth to that um, but I, I think really if you look at any of the masters of their craft they always were 
had some sort of apprentice or someone that they tried to share and impart knowledge to. And I think that's a, a great thing for the for the public good. So whatever it is that you're passionate about, um, you don't have to be a master. Don't worry about being a master yet, but but go out there and create and share and, and talk about what you know already because chances are there's someone who hasn't even taken the first couple steps or that's, you guys are, you, if you're watching this, I'm sure that you're amazing already at animation, that you really are, I do or illustration or whatever creative endeavor you're into. Um, so share what you know and, and help other people grow. I think we're at a really lucky time in history um, where we have so much um, information available to us at this point in time that's still free. I mean, albeit there's, um, you know, gateways to cost for some further stuff, but there's tons of stuff that's that's available for, for free right now. So learn what you can and share what you already know. But I'm getting rambly, so let's go ahead and get into some animation. This is the Goon Rig. It's, uh, it, it isn't a free rig. It is part of the How to Cheat in Maya series of rigs. If you pick up that book, which I got mine at, is it Borders or Barnes & Noble? One of those is closed. I don't remember which one. Um, it's like 15, 20 bucks. But it comes with a couple of rigs, and I found that this one, as far as the cost of entry for rigs, is a pretty um, inexpensive uh, rig to pick up. And it's a really wonderful rig to play around with. I'll be, I think the Malcolm rig is really good too. I haven't used it as much as I should. And that's a free one that you can grab as well. And uh, I really also like the uh, Bishop rig, but that one's uh, from Animation Mentor. So I tend not to use ones that there's a high barrier so that you guys, if you end up wanting to try this stuff out or play around um, uh, with ideas that we talk about and stuff that you can barely uh, low cost point of entry here too and uh so we we did that sword animation uh for the last few days so i was thinking um we kind of keep in that same way uh, it seems like uh there's been some decent feedback good feedback from doing these longer uh form ones so i was thinking for this one what we could do well that would be be kind of fun and and keep with more of the action -y feel but have a longer thing is we can we do like a jump where where he'd start off like kind of on the edge of the cliff, look over the edge of the cliff, so we can get that little acting beat and get the eyes there. Um, have him step back a couple of steps, run forward. Uh, I was thinking to throw in a, like a pole there so you could swing on the pole, spin around it in some way, and then land. So we'd have some some acting beats in there and also um, some, some big action uh, stuff. So that's the idea. The main goal of doing these videos each and every day is to hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you um, to go off and create your own unique, amazing, wonderful, imaginative content each and every day to never give up on your dreams, to take another step each and every day. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead and play around. So I think for this first part, this first hour, um, I'm going to... Um, create a little set here so we're just gonna again I always try to make stuff pretty simple here because if you're doing into animation um, I, I tend to not worry too much about modeling and everything albeit if you're a modeler I'm sure you uh, make wonderful stuff very quickly it takes me a while to, to make anything that looks even uh, a quarter of the way decent in modeling but you gotta find where what you're gonna make, whether you're gonna make uh, animation your focus or whatever it is, and then make that shine if you're putting out your reel. Okay, and let's take this and move that over. Bring that back. And I want it to be kind of far, but I think this might be too far, so let's go uh, create another polygon. Put them in this cube, just so we have like a, a further ground. I want somewhere to go. I think I want this to be out further. And I think I want a gap in between there. So we'll go here. Now, uh, I think just for while we're creating our little scene here, uh, I am going to put a, a roof on there just for the idea of it. But I think in the end, I'm going to probably hide that or not have that in the frame. We'll see. Like I said, the main goal, and I'll be walk forward, kind of look at the um, pole, take a couple steps back, run, jump, 
and then go down. This kind of be the idea. So we'll have those beats there. Um, we've got kind of a, a layout here. Uh, I think I am going to scale this over and resume maybe X, X a little bit more. And then let's create a uh, another cube here just so we have like a background. I usually kind of save a lot of the scenes and prop stuff for later, but I figure it's kind of when we're doing something that's a little more parkourish. I like to kind of build out the scene so I kind of know where I'm going to be working um, within reference to how far I need to go for the animation and everything. And this might be a little too far. We'll see. I'm sure we can still make that a believable uh, jump. And let's uh, assign a new material to this just so it's not uh, the same stuff as the pole there. And let's make it just kind of a. Uh, sorry. Okay. So this is going to be the main bulk. We might even do a camera move here in the shot. We'll see. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and save our file. We are using Autodesk Maya. This is the 2014 version. There are newer versions if you guys want to grab those as well. And there's always a link in the description below to all the stuff that we've talked about so far. So let's go ahead and get animated. Now, I think I want to start off with the character a little bit uh, forward, maybe take a step. Forward towards the edge. I always tend to like to give my characters a little bit of bent knees. It's just kind of a personal um, preference, I guess. Um, have them turn a little bit towards camera, not completely. And just create our first pose. And uh, again, today's is going to be. We'll, we'll see how long we go. We might not get to the jump portion. Uh, of building this up just yet, but we'll see. Um, rotate a little bit of that there. Bring this down here. Over. There. Over. Let's do an X. Let's flip an X. Spine here, a little bit more there. Let's bring that up here, bring that there. Rotate here. Just want to create a more interesting starting pose than what we got for our default pose. I think one of the things that I kind of didn't do so well last time, because um, I always try to think about what can I do to, to make it better off of the last thing that I, that I just did, and especially it's nice when you, you're using a similar um, rig so that you can kind of uh, work from there and you don't have to rebuild it by using different rigs all the time. Um, so I, I feel like I, I went too far in and used the universal um, rotates and I feel like that kind of wasn't as clean with some of my animation as I should have been. So I'm gonna try and avoid that where possible, but I don't wanna choose to not have a better pose um, by sticking to that rule either. But that's just something that, that my workflow would argue. I feel like um, a lot of times, sometimes my, a lot of times, sometimes, wonderful. Uh, uh, my posing can, uh, can be a little lacking but that kind of sticks with how much time I want to time constraints a little bit there too. So let's bring this back. Let it feel a little more relaxed. It doesn't have to be all the way there. And push that forward a little bit more. We just want to create a more interesting starting pose, kind of storytelling pose here. here 
this won't go away at all. It's forced. Hard to feel kind of like a more relaxed pose. Not completely relaxed, but just like it's it's not picking this pose on purpose, but this might be um, well, more of a natural uh, pose that we can find here. That's an okay pose to start with. Maybe push the hips over a little bit that way. And let's uh, start with a little more of an interesting facial pose here. Again, I'm not going to get too much into doing all this, but I always try to start with a more uh, something that's not the default kind of T pose, facial pose either even if I'm not doing really a facial uh, pass here. I think this guy should be more optimistic though, kind of more adventurous kind of spirit. So let's go ahead and bring that up. And push that over. Oh, I kind of want him to have a little bit puffier cheeks on this one. Just something that kind of gives him a little bit of a different personality or feel than uh, the, our character from the last one. Uh, it doesn't have to be, I mean, obviously it's it's pretty close to the same character, but uh, we can do little things to, to tweak it that's going to make it more interesting. Give him a little bit different personality here. Okay, so I think that's okay for our start pose to go with here. The silhouette works pretty well. So we'll go ahead and grab everything. We'll make sure that we turn everything off except for our nerve curves, our nerve surfaces, and our polygons. Go ahead and save our file one more time. Remember, it's always good to save multiple versions and to save often. Go ahead and grab everything here, and we'll set our first key. Okay, and then, like I said, we'll do a quick little step forward. This is just going to be really like a posing pass for what we'll be looking at. And at this point, we'd want to do just kind of get our key poses in. Kind of look down a little bit there. hips back just a little bit here. Still trying to get some kind of a silhouette working there. Alright, and we'll go ahead and punch that in. There's a key that we'll use. And we'll go there. And again, this isn't really our timing stuff. We're just kind of building in our main pose there. Back, so take a couple steps back. This back. Go on, I'll rotate it up a little bit more. Rotate that out a bit. Back here. Get this arm. 
hold that for a little bit, then I'll step back here. So again, we're just gonna kind of lock in. This is one of, gonna be one of our main keys. Go back to 36 here. We'll do another step back here. That'll be a good step. Actually, let's do a couple more because I want enough space that we have some strides that we can run at for this character here. Okay, and give me about 120. Uh, I only got 80 frames, so I still can get four as well. So let's see. wasn't going to be if we were doing that small step, but since we're doing a larger step here. 57. And as opposed to some of the other videos that we've done, um, I, I am going to vary up the timing of each of these steps more. Usually, uh, if you've watched some of my other stuff, I keep it at like, this is on 12s, this is on this. And that's, you know, in order to really get it done within an hour and get something workable, but we're something where we want some variety in there. We want some more of the timing. I, I tend not to play with those uh, such rigid uh, 12s and 14s and all that. That's just a place to get started with. Go back to 46. And we'll do one more. And this will be our smaller step here. So up to 57. I want to lock in that foot there. And this will be 65. That should give us enough um, room to do maybe two running steps. We'll see, we'll have to clean up, I'm sure we'll clean up our spacing a little bit more. Alright, at this point, let's rotate the hips a little bit straighter there. straight on to where he's going to be going. Make sure we tweak that foot here. And at this point, I'm going to lock in this key here and give me few frames, uh, switch to about 40 there, and 120 here. And we'll go here, go back, go down, there, kind of anticipate that he's going to be going forward. Tweaking the 
just pose a little bit more. This pose again. This is this is just our kind of key posing pass here for getting what we need or need in there for our beats, just to see how everything is going to flow. Then we'll look at our timing and stuff here. So get everything there, set that. I think we'll actually hold that for a few more frames. to 120 and this should be pretty and I'll probably stay a little more rigid here Six frames from there. Bring that one forward there. And that be right about here. Again, we'll get all the passing positions and everything working a little better. I think we'll probably push those hips a little more forward. something there. 
think I want uh, one more spring here. One more spring there. I begin to realize I'm not doing a timing pass, but sometimes mixing between a walk and a run, try and get the timing a little bit better there. And another frame in between here. takes too long, so I might cut the frame out of there, let's see, yeah, let's cut another frame out of there, yeah, this one, should actually be right on the edge here. And ball roll it up. Cut up and over a little bit more. That can drag down a little bit. Maybe twist it. set everything there and let's grab the feet and the hips again we want to lock them in there we'll go up and over up and over there try and switch the chest to be puffed out here Up so he's like reaching out for this here. shoulder. This is one of those places where I really want to try and get a good, cool pose working here. This is one of those key moments of the shot. arm back here. Try and get it to drag a little bit more. Bring that arm back there. This arm back there. So we got there to there. I'm sure that's too long for a timing. And then we're going to hit uh, Let's just set this again. I'm sure we'll change a bunch of stuff with that posing. It's just a rough pass here. And let's grab everything again. Come over this way. I want to overshoot it here. There. Which means that knee twist. We're going to have to. Way here, and the rotate. 
rotate, gotta rotate it around this way, and rotate that around that way. Or actually, let's do the chest here. Uh, I want to make sure I'm getting this right. Okay. So let's swing the legs. to get what's going right right now. And then I want to rotate this that way. Right now I need to do the chest. Should still work. That's what we want, right? Okay. Bring that over this way. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second here. Switch our hand, to this hand to IK. And then bring that over here. So we really want it to be planted on this pole there. Rotate it. At this point, I mean, it's just going to get annoying eventually. Uh, I'm going to grab both of those, create a new layer, and hide those because I don't want that to get in the way of it while I'm creating this pose and getting this to work here. So, I'm going to have him grab that here. Now, this is going to become a lot of stuff that we'll end up doing on ones as we get there, but we're not quite there yet. This is going to be, how many parts is this animation going to be? Who knows? A lot. Bring that arm drag in there, so let's see. Yeah, because to get that to not look janky is going to be a lot of work. And get this elbow twist. back there, feet, swing here, there, and rotate those, solution or should we go the other way if we can't get this to work pretty easily then i'm just going to stick with the original way that it works but i think overshooting it would be fun no you know what i'll stick with it and it goes from the front okay uh let's get rid of that idea i think it's just going to be a lot of extra work and not that we don't want to do extra work but i don't know that the payoff is going to be worth it so We'll just have him grab it from the front. And I'm still going to switch this hand uh, over to IK here. Like I said, I don't want to make this a 10-parter where you just watch me work on three frames uh, for a long time. So I'll try and keep some of this stuff simple. Or simpler-ish. Is that elbow not pivoting here? Elbow twist. Okay, there we go. Just wondering what that was. I had the wrong controller here for a second. Bring that over. 
They can still have some fun with this though. What's that mantra? Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Sometimes that's gonna be the best way to do it. And that doesn't mean you should not try complicated things as well, but especially with trying to keep these fairly uh, within an hour time frame that we can work with. Sometimes that's gonna make things. straight out so it does kind of hit it a little bit hard there and we'll take the chest and we'll straighten that out a little bit more or take this that way try and get it to be fairly flat so let's uh, zero everything out here Sometimes zeroing out a pose um, helps a lot too. So if you ever feel like you're working against something or a pose and you don't want to completely go into like gimbal lock or where you're going uh, the 360 degree rotation further, um, zero stuff out. It's a fairly easy way to approach things. And it gives you a fresh clean slate to work with for your posing there too. slow and we got to clean up our arcs but we're just trying to build this thing set everything there. Again, we'll tweak our posing here, um, but I want to do kind of two frames shy from there. Okay, and then obviously we need to go down further on all of this stuff. to tweak our spacing and everything just trying to get a rough pass on this so let's see okay so again set everything there and then push this back to about 140 and we'll go 
essentially going to want to, if I'm going to set that there, for 120, let's check IP right here, because I'm going to want to put this hand on a pole going slightly down there. I'll have it eventually reach up here. This stuff is subject to change. We're really just getting the main stuff uh, where we need it to go for right now. So actually, I think maybe I'll put it right in the middle here. So we can keep it in that rotate scene here. Maybe we'll go on this side instead. So we wanted to pay with our arms, so maybe we're going to have to go on the other side. Alright, that's fine. Get that arm over here. It's the way it sort of eventually has. This one, and we'll take a rotate down a little bit more, bring that over, let's try and rotate it so it wraps around. We get a little bit of intersection, so it'll be a, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set everything there. And we don't have to be perfect for our timing just yet, and it'll mix it up for sure. We'll set everything here. I'll go down to about 128. Hold for a little bit here, and then we'll plop down on the ground from there. So we'll bring both of those feet down there, bring this one down here, both of those hands down there. We got a 
lot of the bulk of the stuff we need to get in in so far so that's good here for right now, but one frame later, we'll pound it down on the ground. So I'll get rid of the rotate X here so it's flat. Let's make sure it's actually on the ground plane here. Get rid of the rock and pivot. And maybe we'll let it still be up a little bit. I might rearrange some of that posing stuff, but again, it's just a rough pass for right now. some more stuff on this spot. Oh, just building it for right now. And then the next one. Zero that out. Zero that out. And then we'll put all the way on the ground there. This hand will be on the ground finally. zero out this hand pose here, create something better. So it really hits on the ground. Get that thumb up there, bring it out. just so we have something in the fingers to go for later. Not perfect hand pose, but definitely better than what we had. And this one, come on, that's the end on that. Let's see. Do that. That'll work. Need to land on the tips of the fingers there. Maybe we'll 
switch that around as we go. cleanup still to do but I think we've got some information that works there so let's try and take a look at this whole thing and uh, let's see start off at zero and 136 136 all right so let's take a look at this again it's gonna be real rough but we think we've got most of the information we need in there I do like that it slows down a little bit, but I think it's a little too much, so I'm going to cut a frame from there. Just kind of just do a little bit of a timing pass for the overall shot. I do like that it kind of slows right towards the end and then drops. And again, there's a ton of crust in this thing. Haven't really worked through all of our stuff yet, but we got some of it working. I think these running steps right here need to be about a frame shorter on each one. I feel like they're a little bit too fast, so let's uh, cut our frame range here about 85, just so we can get in there a little bit better. Again, uh, just cut one frame from there, one frame from here. out there too it just feels like it holds too much uh, right there even though I do want a little bit of a hold so it'll read that he's jumping off there let's go ahead and try and make this a little bit better um, so set one twenty four Make 122 or 123, so it's a little less slow down. Okay, now the other uh, kind of big tiny note that I'm seeing right now is I want to hit that a thing I have here. Thirty frames, and let's buffer this by quite a few frames, so we can get that acting loop there. Probably about ten frames or so, so we can really feel, maybe even longer. And now let's set. And again, this isn't uh, perfectly in there. It's just kind of timing notes there for how we want to time this shot out. And that probably pushes. 
pushes us back a few frames. So 148, isn't that what we're looking at? 142. All right, so let's watch that now, see if those moments kind of hit. So we've got steps forward, looks, steps back. It's not really perf great yet. We'll go hit about there instead. Move that to there. Hold that first move a little bit, or that first position a little bit longer, just so it has its own little bit of move there. Let's see. set this right there so we blend those moves a little bit more. Got some definite spacing that we need to clean up through there. But still think that that needs to hold for maybe another four frames. Again, we'll add some more variety in there so it's not really just holding so tight, but I think just for overall timing of our shot, we want it to really read. Maybe we'll have them look a little bit left to right or something there too. now because we added that so that'd be what 149 and eventually we'll add a little bit of uh, recoil at the end there too so probably another uh, 20 frames or so of just settle after that still think that this step right to there from so this should be kind of a fluid move from 122 to 124 is that really all it takes Maybe it's the step right before it that this move from 117 to 122 is too long. So let's grab everything. Cut the frame from here. Just one. slow down now so it's a little more even all right so we'll definitely get into uh, polishing this thing up I think we'll probably break it into two parts so we can kind of focus a little bit more on, on cleanup uh, so the first half will be the uh, you know the walk up anticipate and then the run and then the jump and that part will be the second part of how we'll kind of look at it. So probably hit up and try and polish out more of that first part tomorrow. I'll add some more uh, details, a little bit more of our acting beats, and then try and actually flesh out like the passing positions and everything there. Um, I don't know. Maybe 
maybe we'll break down everything more and add just a few do another whole breakdown pass that would be just kind of similar to this um, but with all the breakdowns uh, for the whole thing and then get into more detail we'll see um, but I hope you guys are liking this uh, a little bit different setup for doing these uh, videos every day but we're getting to, able to do some some more uh, in-depth breakdown some longer shots some shots that kind of have a little more meat to them rather than just two seconds we gave ourselves a little bit longer um, so let me know down in the comments down below or just you know those thumbs up uh, always help too. let me know what you guys are liking or not um, I love you guys lots let's take a look back at where we started we're looking at the beautiful work of Broer Anders Wickstrom he said uh, for the public good or pro bono publico um, again it was attributed to to him or at least the people around him but I think it's a great uh, quote and a great thing to think about at least for your uh, creative day-to-day -day. we'll play this while we're wrapping everything up here too um, just so that when you're, when you're thinking about when you're creating that you're not creating in a vacuum that you're creating to hopefully help other people or to cause other people to think or uh, there was a great I probably mentioned this before but when I was first starting out um, getting into to drawing more than just uh, you know draw once a week or once a month or once a day even um, but when I first started getting out I sent a lot of uh, to, to people that I really liked I sent out a little letter like hey do you have any advice or inspiration and uh, you know most people were, were pretty busy but one of the guys that got back to me who unfortunately I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now but uh, his advice was to find your message and uh, first I kind of um, I don't know it was just it was too lofty of a message for me to understand and hear at that time but I'll give you guys that same uh, advice too and that's you know find out what it is that you want to say with your work or what it is that you want to do with your work you know with with this animation time stuff the main goal of doing these videos um, is to encourage you guys and inspire you and hopefully um, you know every time if you subscribe to the channel with which I urge you guys to even if you don't really watch another one of my videos ever again just subscribe to the channel so that you'll remember this conversation that we had you know I'll, I'll put an upload up every day and when you see it in your subscription feed you'll remember oh yeah I should work I should create something I should uh, imagine something you know you, you uh, I understand the, the the production level on some of these videos isn't 100% uh, but I wanted to be honest with these videos I wanted to do them so you can see the process you can see when I screw up you can see when something works out you can see uh, the whole process you can see the, the I try to Think through this stuff out loud with you guys as well um, but you know find whatever message it is that, that you guys are, are passionate about you know my illustration stuff I still am flushing out the, the main um, work behind that boat but at least with this animation time I know for sure that the main goal is to hopefully be here to offer um, something that wasn't available when I was first learning animation and that was just you know how do you do it what's it like what what's the ins and outs what's the honest day-to-day -day life of somebody who's who's animating that uh, wasn't available when I was uh, first doing it especially not um, for free there weren't very many resources or things like that where you could really just see over the shoulder hang out with someone while they animate um, so hopefully um, you guys are encouraged and you're inspired and you're going off and creating your own work I know a lot of the times the people that uh, comment or, or send me messages or anything are, are creating amazing um, channels of their own stuff and, and sure some people are beginners and some people are experts but at least you're out there creating and you're learning and you're taking another new step in your journey towards mastering whatever medium it is that you're passionate about so I love you guys lots I'm getting rambly so I think that means it's time to wrap up times to wrap up time to wrap up and we will see you for some more animation as soon as I can find that button tomorrow